joining me for another episode of Eric's Camping Adventures. We are off towards St. Louis this morning. Um, got a nice early rise. Uh, woke up to some cattle uh, mooing and a uh, beautiful sunrise, some good coffee and oatmeal. I like to actually stay at that little conservation area because um, it's quiet, it's peaceful, I kind of like the uh, sunset, it's, it's really beautiful there. And last night got a special treat, the road was closed from some flooding from the one direction, so Google Maps routed us around the flooding, but uh, that meant that there was no road noise all night long, and it was uh, just a quiet, peaceful stay um, through the night without trucks flying down that little uh, state route, so it was... Uh, nice and quiet, more quiet than usual. So I was teasing my brother that he would need to bring a toolbox to pick up the Corolla because his Jeep might break down because I have maintained that Corolla perfectly. I think the oil is still clean by the end of the oil change and the transmission fluid is still pink after 400,000 miles. So uh, we agreed to meet at a Love's and when we met, we found out we had actually worn the same type of an outfit. <laughs> Crazy. Exchanged the car and headed off to the... Uh, campground we were going to spend outside of St. Louis. So this is the Dr. Edmund A. Babbler Memorial Park. It was actually established after the untimely death of Dr. Babbler, and it was established by his brother to raise a memorial to the great pride that Dr. Babbler took in caring for charity cases um, throughout the St. Louis area. Each of the campsites in the Babbler Memorial Park have a nice concrete pad, so I put down a drop cloth to protect the bottom of the gazelle tent from abrasion against the concrete. I took another risk when I set up the gazelle tent. I decided not to try any way of staking the tent down. It was a calm day, there was no wind gusts, and I actually did win that bet. <laughs> we stayed put. We did use the blow-up mattress uh, for this trip. Um, it was pretty comfortable, easy to fill up with my little Jackery. We had a great sunshiny day at a good spacious campsite with some good privacy. And that sun actually filled up my uh, Jackery pretty quick and I was able to use my Jackery to charge my battery for my uh, chainsaw. That actually was necessary to do a little cleanup here at the campsite.
by the fire pit, someone had tried to burn a wet log and basically just left a mess. I'm not sure why people do this because big logs do not burn like this, especially when they're wet from the amount of rain that we've had in this area, but we're gonna talk about how to clean this up. I am imagining some campers going down into the woods and finding a log cut up by some forest workers and then returning and pouring some lighter fluid or some uh, gasoline on it to try to light this log. And that is just not how wood burns. So I'm gonna show you how you find uh, good wood in your log and uh, uh, have a nice fire. First of all, I like to cut the wood up into um, thin little sections and you can see from how I prepared it that uh, that makes it easy to split. I just take a hatchet with me. Uh, most wood that is dried out and useful um, can be split pretty easily. A little secret, the inside of the wood, once it's split apart, is bone dry and that is some good wood to burn. But it's not gonna burn from the outside in when it's soaked in the rain. Um, it's not likely to burn even if it's dry. Um, that size of a log just doesn't light up. A small little campfire is just not enough to uh, get a log like this started for some kind of a pleasant fire. Now it'll burn in a forest fire, but If you create small little chunks of wood like this, you can actually create a good little fire with lots of dry wood surface area, and it will be a nice, pleasant, even cooking fire that you can use for uh, uh, preparing your meal later. A light sprinkling of sawdust is a great accelerant for your fire. If you put it on too heavy, it will smother the fire. Uh, but just put a little bit on and uh, you'll get things going a little bit hotter pretty quick. That cheap little Harbor Freight electric chainsaw has uh, really worked great for me in multiple occasions and uh, I think that it will continue to do so. It provides a great way to clean up a campsite and um, prepare my wood for me for a, a fire when that's allowed. After we turned some of those small chunks of wood into some flaming coals, we pushed them under the grate and started some pierogies. We added some mushrooms to the pierogies, covered them up and pulled them off to the side to make some room for a little bit more heat for the steaks.
We had a nice savory dinner on a cool spring evening. And then we enjoyed a special visitor to our campsite. I didn't get him on a good camera, but it was neat seeing a cardinal just come and hang out at our picnic table. After dinner, I piled up those little small chunks of wood and it was producing quite a bit of heat. I was comfortable in shorts and a t-shirt and I was quite a distance from the fire. This is a good time to talk about how to keep things simple when you're camping. There's lots of things you can't keep simple. You can't control the weather, you can't control the wind, um, you can't always control the environment or your fellow campers around you. Um, so you just have no idea in some areas what you will experience. But one thing that you can keep simple is your meal prep. For example, I know that I'm going to be making some coffee in the morning, so I just boil a little bit extra water and use that extra water to make some instant oatmeal for my breakfast. I know what I'm doing in advance. There's not a lot of decision making. Um, I keep it simple. My wife pre-packed some fruit, some granola, and some almond milk, and that made up her breakfast. We finished our coffee as the sunlight just began to peek through the leaves of the trees on the east side of our campsite, and then we slowly packed up. This was a good uh, camping night out. Um, when you make your reservation, you can very carefully choose your campsite, whether you want to be around other people and how close you are. You can make this as social or as private and secluded as you want. And we were lucky to find a nice, quiet, private uh, campsite.
Thank you for joining me for another episode of Eric's Camping Adventures. Come back for some more.